We are continuing on with the math GED test. Here we go. So again, hit pause, look at number 10, take a guess at the answer, then I'm going to go over it for you. On number 10, it says simplify the following expression, 2x squared minus 2xy plus 4xy. So these are both like terms because they both have the same letters, x and y, so you can combine those. So it's 2x squared and then negative 2 plus 4, different signs subtract, take the sign of the bigger number, so it's plus 2xy. And again, you got a calculator, so if you didn't know how to do that, it's negative 2 and then plus 4. So it gave you 2xy. Then what they did was they factored, they took out what they had in common. They both have a 2, so they divided both of them by 2 or factored it out. And then they both have an x, so they divide both of them by x. So 2x divided by x, 2x squared, so 2x squared divided by 2x. x squared means there's two x's, so that canceled out to just being an x. And then over here, the 2 and the x cancel out, leaving y. So we factor down a 2x, and it's 2x times x plus y. And so even from here, right here, because there's a plus sign, hopefully you realize you can cancel out B and C. So then it's either A or D. And because we factored out a 2, it's going to be the D right there. All right, pause it, try 11. Number 11, a scientist measures the outside temperature at noon each day over a three-day period. Saturday negative 1, Sunday 2, Monday negative 4. Place the average temperature on these three days. What, oh, what was the average temperature on these three days? Place an X on the number line below to represent your answer. Okay, so they said the average. Looking at your formula sheet um, that you get to have GED D day. Average means mean. We talked about this in part one. Average and mean, same thing, and it discusses how you find the average. What you're supposed to do is add up all the numbers. So we're going to add them all up. Negative one. So then we put an X on the negative 1. Again, let's not panic. Let's use the calculator. If you didn't know how to do that, it was negative 1 plus 2 plus negative 4. Hit enter, then divide by 3, and you get negative 1. Next one, number 12. Again, maybe hit pause, restart it then. Okay, on number 12, the answer you were looking at was 16,000. 384. It's 4 to the 7th. It's not 4 times 7. It's 4 7's multiplied together. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So you could multiply those all together by hand or why don't we use the caret key on the calculator. So let me hit clear here. So 4 and then the caret is diagonal from the 7. So 4 caret 7 enter and it says 16,384. I think my mode is on classic. It is. If it was in math print mode, it looks a little different when you do it. So 4 carat 7, it raises it up there for you. So math print and classic, they're both good modes. You can toggle between the two and use them both. But again, that's the only thing you're going to use mode for, so change it between classic and math print mode. Again, 4 and you want the caret key right up here, diagonal from the 7, caret 7. Okay, hit pause and restart it then. 13. In the computer spreadsheet above, negative A1 minus C2 minus A3 plus C2 times B1 is equal to which of the following? Hint, on a spreadsheet, the asterisk means multiplication. Okay, so we're going to fill things in here. A1 is negative 2 minus C2, which was 3, minus A3, 5, plus C2, 
which again was 3, times b1, negative 4. We are not going to waste our time trying to do PEMDAS on it. We're going to put in the calculator. No, the calculator does not have brackets, but it has parentheses. So where you see a bracket, just put parentheses, because a parentheses and a bracket are the same thing, just like mean and median are the same thing. All right, so let's put it in the calculator. Here we go. So negative on the bottom row, parentheses, negative 2 minus parentheses, 3 minus 5, parentheses, plus 3 times negative 4, parentheses, enter. You get 12. Again, don't try to do PEMDAS. Just put in the calculator. The test is timed and we need to keep on moving. Number 14, hit pause and restart. Simplify the expression. 6x to the 4th plus 7x plus 5x cubed minus 4x to the 4th minus 2x cubed plus 3x. I would take the time to distribute the negative across that parenthesis. It's like there's a negative 1 there. So rewrite it by multiply them all by negative 1. And again, if you go in to take this test in person, they're going to give you whiteboards to use. So you're going to have to rewrite the whole thing on the whiteboard. So we got 6x to the 4th plus 7x plus 5x cubed minus 4x to the 4th. Negative 1 times 4 is minus 4. Negative times a negative makes that plus 2x cubed. And then minus times a plus makes minus 3x. Everything changed signs because it was minus. It's minus all of it. So that becomes minus, plus, and then that's negative. Starting with the highest power, which is the 4, we have 6x to the 4th minus 4x to the 4th. 6 minus 4 is 2. 2x to the 4th. Well, that takes care of those two. The next power up is the 3. We have um, 5x to the 3rd and 2x to the 3rd. 5 plus 2 is 7. They both have a 7, so that doesn't help. Last of all, the x is 7x minus 3x. 7 minus 3 is 4. So it's b. All right, 15. Hit pause. OK, on 15, the perimeter of the trapezoid below is 50. What is its area? Again, remain calm. Grab your formula sheet. It says for a trapezoid, it is, yeah, it's a trapezoid. The area equals one half the height times the basis added together. All right, so why did they give us the 50? They gave us the 50 to find the height. The height is missing here. This 13 is kind of extra information, kind of, sort of, but we need it to use with the perimeter. The perimeter, remember perimeter has the word rim in it. So it's the rim of the whole figure. So you're adding up all four sides here and you will get the perimeter there being 50. So 10 plus 13 plus 15 plus whatever that number adds up to 50. So we could call it X, but in other words, we just need to take 50 and subtract those three numbers off it. So using our calculator again, we got 50 minus 10 minus 13 minus 15. That leaves 12 left over for the height. That side's the height because here is the right angle. The height always has to have a right angle on it. And the bases of this trapezoid, base 1 and base 2, are the two sides that are parallel. So we use the 13 to find the height being 12, but we're not going to use that to find the area of it. So 1 half the height, which is 12, times the base 1 and base 2. It does not matter which one you plug in for base 1 and base 2. It's interchangeable, and you'll get the same answer if you plugged it in 15 plus 10. All right, so working that one out on the calculator here, I've got 1 half, so 1 n over d2, toggle to the right, times 12, and then it's parentheses, or you can do times parentheses, you'll get the same answer, plus 10 uh, parentheses 10 plus 15, 
enter, and you get 150. All right, the next one. Again, hit pause and restart it after you get a good try on it. It says, Ryza wants to order business cards. A printing company determines the cost C to a new customer using the following function, where B is the number of boxes of cards and N is the number of ink colors. If Ryza orders four boxes of cards and printed in three colors, how much will the cards cost? Okay, I wouldn't pay attention to any of the words. I'd focus on this formula here. They said four for the boxes and three for the cards. Plug it in. Four for both the Bs there and then three for the C. And then you can just put it in your calculator. Again, remain calm, ignore the words, just do the math. So we've got 25.6 or 25.60 times four. It's times because it's smashed together. 25.60 times B, there's no space between it, it means it's multiplied, plus 14. And no, you need, don't need to put the zeros in there. I just did it because I know some people are like, don't you have to put the zeros? It's optional. I just put them in to be nice. And then times B, which is four, and then parenthesis, three minus one, parenthesis, enter. You're all done, letter A. Okay, last one we're gonna do in this part. So again, hit pause and restart it. Okay, 17 says the graph of the equation y equals negative 3 fourths x plus 1 is a line that passes through points c and d on the coordinate plane. Which of the following points must also lie on the graph of the line? Okay, when you plot points, the first point is x and the second point is y. It goes in alphabetical order, x, y, z. The x-axis, as the picture shows, goes left and right. The y-axis goes up and down. So you're gonna go left and right first, and then you're gonna go up and down. And you do this from the point zero. So from zero, what you're gonna to wanna to do here is just guess at it, Pl plot the points, see which one makes sense would still be on the line. It's three, one. So from zero, you count three to the right, one, two, three, and go up one. So that's three, one. That is not on the line. Next up, 8, negative 5. So from 0, count right, because you go right first. It's positive, so you're going to go right. And then it's negative, so you go down. So right 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and then down 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Yes, it goes off the graph a little, but it looks like that's probably our answer. Let's graph the next one, 5, 3. So from 0, go right 5, 2, 3, 4, 5, and up 3. So there's 5, 3. That is not anywhere near the line. Last of all, 10, 6. So right 10 and up 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and up 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. That's not on the line. So it's B. Okay, so part 3 is coming.